Okay, ladies and gentlemen, before we start, I'd just like to apologise. I've got actually got a quite a heavy head cold at the moment. However, this show must go on. This LT230, we will be doing the front and rear cover bearings, so um, this is going to be quite a long one. Okay, hello and welcome back to Land Rover Toolbox Videos. Now, this is the correct tool for holding the flange when you're removing a nut. Basically what it does, it will hold the studs in place while you crank it. You can see that here. It's a specialist tool and it's very expensive. It is possible to make a tool like this if you have the welding skills or fabrication skills. Basically you need to hold the flange while you undo the nut, otherwise it will just spin. Um, you can see the operation here. I've got it lightly clamped in the vise just to hold it. And then it has enough length on both of the uh, tools to be able to tighten the nut up to the correct torque. No doubt you're not going to have one of these and you're not actually going to be able to afford one. So instead you can use a lever bar and hold the studs either one way or another. And this will assist you undoing the nut. And this is done up to 176 newton meters, so it'll be a little bit of a struggle. However, it is possible. So basically here you have a long pry bar, bit it in the right way so you've got something to pull against and then crack the nut off like so. In the flange you'll find that you have a felt washer which is dropped through and you have a washer on top of it and a nylock nut. This is the front flange of the transfer box. Yes it is different from the rear. What we're looking here is that it has a mud shield which will stop the studs from coming out. Okay, good idea to check to make sure that it's not badly worn. If it is, it needs replacing. The rear flange is different from the front flange. It's a different part number and it has a circlip as a retainer. And you can see that here clearly. You'll be wanting to inspect the seal land, make sure it's not badly worn because this will be uh, one cause of a leak and you want to make sure that the splines as well as should be in good condition which, because of the tightness of the flanges against the shaft, they should be. <laughs> Okay, so we're actually going to have a look at the diff lock mechanism as well as change the bearing on this housing. Now, the gaskets have been removed, they've been in here, it's just for tutorial purposes. You do have to remove this selector housing to take the housing off the main casing, but we'll also be removing this diff lock mechanism as well, checking it over and lubricating it. Diff lock mechanism is retained by three bolts. You can lift it straight out the casing like so, and basically it's quite simple, but you want to remove the nut off the top. This will enable us to be able to pull the shaft out and change the O-rings in here. The high-low selector housing, easy to take off. There's six bolts, uh, M8 or 13 mil spanner socket, whatever. And then to crack the seal on the gasket, just give it a tap with a soft hammer, and that will come out just like that. The diff lock warning lamp switch, there's a lock bolt just here, that's undone and then you can wind the switch out. This needs to be removed because uh, it is obstructing a bolt that is underneath it. The front seal can be removed uh, in either of two or three ways, it's quite a hard seal so you need possibly a long bar to remove it. Okay, so the front casing is clamped to the main casing by a series of bolts. They're all M8, so they'll have uh, 13 mil heads on them. Just be aware, then you, when you remove it, there's actually a bolt at the top here. I'm just pointing to it with an arrow. Always use something like a soft hammer to break the gasket seal. Don't use a harder hammer, otherwise you'll end up cracking or denting the casing. Now, I can't get this off, and yep, found the bolt there, so just unwind that and then lift the casing off. The reason we take the top selector housing off is because it would stop us from lifting this off. So you can see that. Right, so underneath what we have is the selector rod for high and low, and then we have the center differential unit of the transfer box with bearing. Right, so we've got the housing on the bench, as it were, and next to the switch hole, we have a detent. 
Now this detent here you can undo, but what you need to realize is that it has the cap, it has a spring and a ball bearing. This is an Allen key size. Once that's been removed you can then pull the spring back. Okay. This might be a little bit difficult, but you use a screwdriver, hold the spring back, and then lift out the clip like so. This is a slotted clip. Both clips will need to be removed first in the same manner before you can remove the shaft. Okay, so the selector shaft comes out of the back of the housing. You might find that it will be a little bit sticky, but the detent once removed, you can then tap it out. What you'll find here, I've actually got the detent stuck at the moment, so I've had to roll this onto the back of the shaft so the ball bearing doesn't get caught in the grooves of the shaft and then remove it. It may be possible to remove the detent uh, ball bearing with a magnetic screwdriver. If not, just remember removing the shaft, you then make sure that you do not lose this ball bearing because it's uh, vitally important. Select a shaft here for the um, diff lock. It has a groove cut in it, and this is where the clips go in, and that's where the spring sits. We will need to check the condition this and measure the grooves. Uh, well, until later. We're also taking the rear cover off. That's easy, and what you'll find in here is the speedo drive. And you can see the blue um, gear there, and then you have the gear on the shaft as well. Right, so it's just as simple as anything. Undo the nut. Remember, you have a felt washer. Just check the seal. If the seal land is okay, if it is in bad condition, then change the flange. Now, with this one, we also have a cap, which we need to lift off with a screwdriver. Okay, now some screwdrivers can be used in this fashion. Once you've got it in the slot and turned it, and it'll lift so far, you can then lift it out of the way. Okay, so after then, it's just a matter of removing the seal. Right, so that's the seal prized out of the housing. This will leave you access to the bearing. So the bearing is here. This is not a tape of roller bearing, as some might expect. This is a roller bearing, so it will give you an idea what loads it has to cope with. Right, so on the back end here, you can see the speedo drive. The speedo drive has its own housing, which sometimes can be removed. In this case, it cannot, it is jammed in there solidly. Right, so we have our diff lock lever. Pulling it out of the housing, you'll see the shaft and the O ring on the shaft. Right, this is basically a stop any leaks, water getting in, oil getting out. This needs to be cleaned up and the O rings are changed. Once cleaned, then it can be greased with the new O ring and then slipped into place. There also is a new o-ring on the housing itself to seal it to the casing. On the selector shaft, with the cutout here, this is where your lever will sit in. This has a specific measurement and a tolerance. If it's too wide, then you'll find that the selector won't work properly. Right, so you get it in tolerance. The tolerance is on the screen. and Measure it with a pair of uh, vernier calibers. The same goes with the head of the lever, or the end of the lever just here. Measure this, the tolerance is on the screen. If it's out of tolerance, this needs to be replaced as well. If it's in tolerance, then it's good. All right, so while we've got our vernier gauges here, we're also going to check the fingers on the selector fork. Now, these have a tolerance, they're on the screen, and you want to be measuring at this point here, and on the other point on the other side. Right, so we've got the measurement here, and what we're also going to be looking for is for cracks, for excessive wear, any type of damage, basically. If this component is uh, worn or cracked, then this will need replacing. However, this one looks in good condition, so we'll put it black. The dog clutch selector fork groove, okay, there's a certain width that you'll need, and you can measure it, see on item 14 here. Because it's not a synchro mesh unit, you need to make sure that it, the teeth on the dog clutch are in good condition as well. Uh, that will be these teeth here. On the high-low selector housing, you have your lever. The lever is held onto a shaft with a grub screw, and that also is the same Allen key as you'd use for the detents, as far as I'm aware. Anyway, this is um, quite an effort to get out because it's thread-locked in. 
However, with a good Allen key tool, you'll be able to unscrew it. Once the grub screws out, you can then, with the housing in the vise and using a soft hammer, tap the lever off the shaft. Okay, now you might find a bit of resistance because of corrosion, however, this will come off. Right, so again, with our vernier calipers, we're going to be measuring the lever in exactly the same fashion as what we did with the um, diff lock. Basically, this needs to be in within tolerance. I've cleaned the shaft up on this because it was quite rusty. And the O-ring here, I'll just get it in focus, this will need to be changed as well. This stops uh, moisture getting into the housing and into the uh, transfer box. Okay, so you have a breather on here, make sure that's clear, otherwise you'll be having blown seals. If there's any wear or this is leaking, this is a core plug, if the core plug's leaking, you can change it. If the housing's cracked, then that housing will need to be replaced. Likewise, inspect this drilling. If it's overloid, then that will warrant a new housing as well. Okay, so after changing the O-ring on the shaft, then it's a matter of putting it back into place. It's quite easy. Thread locking the grub screw and then tightening it down, making sure you have it in the locating hole of the shaft. Right, so let's get on to the bearings now. You can hear the state of these. They're not badly worn, but they're noisy. Removing the shaft from the bearing is quite easy. With a soft hammer, just tap it out. To make sure you don't drop the shaft on the floor and damage the splines. Same applies to the rear housing. However, be aware that you have a speedo drive gear on the shaft. Okay, well, we had to leave the speedo drive in the housing. And on here we have our worm gear. Ensure that it goes back exactly how it came off. Right, so with the bearing, it's retained with a circlip, like so. So you need a suitable pair of circlip pliers, and it can be a bit tough to remove. However, remove it, and then you're free to remove the bearing. Okay, so looking inside the housing, towards the front, you'll see that there are two cutouts in the housing. This is where you use a punch to knock the bearing out. Take advantage of both of the cutouts. You just have to be aware that the aluminium casing is quite soft, so you'll need a hard, even surface, and then you can knock the bearing out, like so. 